Welcome again. Today our journey through the IB Environmental Systems and Societies syllabus takes us to the mid-Atlantic Ocean and to the island of Bermuda as we describe and evaluate methods for measuring changes in abiotic and biotic components of an ecosystem along an environmental gradient 2.7.1 and we will describe and evaluate methods for measuring changes in abiotic and biotic components of an ecosystem due to specific human activities 2.7.2 Consider this task to determine the abundance, diversity and distribution of barnacles in the intertidal zone. What is this intertidal zone? It's also referred to as the littoral zone and it's that area that gets covered over when there's high tide and that area that gets exposed when there's low tide and the space between those two points. That is termed the intertidal zone which goes from one point to another point and has different abiotic conditions where moisture and sunlight vary throughout the day. That is referred to as an environmental gradient where over space of A to B there is a change in abiotic factors. But this gradient can also refer to a change in abiotic factors over time. So if an area changes between the year 1900 and 2000, then that too can be referred to as an environmental gradient. But more often than not, an environmental gradient means some change over space like the foothills of a mountain to its top how the environmental factors change or from the low tide point to the high tide point across the area known as the intertidal zone next we should define what barnacles are and these are barnacle crustaceans belonging to the same group as shrimp and lobsters. But these creatures are sessile, meaning they don't move anywhere. And this structure on the outside is its exoskeleton. Barnacles are extremely well adapted for this unique niche that they occupy. They form a very strong bond to the substrate or to the rock that's bashed by waves continuously. They have protection for drying or desiccation from the harsh sunlight. And when the high tide comes up, they extend special tentacle-like structures and they feed on algae in the salt water. These creatures here are limpets and they feed on the larvae of the barnacles. Other predators of barnacles include creatures like whelks which are sea snails and starfish. Let's return now to our original task. The southern shore of the island of Bermuda in the mid-Atlantic Ocean. And to carry out this study of the distribution, abundance and diversity of the barnacles on the south shore of this island, we have divided this area, which you can tell it's about 12 to 15 kilometers long. We have divided that area into 12 zones and we are going into each of the 12 zones 
and subdividing the zones into smaller sections so each kilometer is then subdivided into 10 meter sections and each of those subsections will be numbered 1 through 100 because there are 100 10 meter sections in one kilometer then using a random number selection a random number generator it could be a table of random numbers or it could be a random number generator that you can have on a phone or a computer we select five or six or maybe 25 it all depends on how much time you have available and how much manpower you have available then you select a certain number of random samples and you visit those areas and you mark off a belt like this one here that extends from the low tide mark all the way to the high tide mark and you count everything in that area to determine all the types of barnacles that you have and the populations of each type and when you have the population of each type of barnacle and all of the different types of barnacles that you have you are able to determine the abundance or the amount of each species all the different types of barnacles that you have the diversity and where do you find each type of barnacle in relation to the intertidal zone do you find them at the low tide mark or at the high tide mark you would have a lot of data to determine the populations the number of different populations and where each population is located the abundance the diversity and the distribution consider our earlier lessons and think about what measure you can use to express diversity you might return to have a look at the Simpsons index of diversity and use it to express barnacle diversity in each of your belt transects. That is the tool that we're using to get random samples. And with this random sampling method, we go through each of our 12 sections. Of course, depending upon how much time and resources you have available, you may decide to skip some of the 12 big samples here that you have and select some random numbers from within this and then from within each of those one kilometer stretches you select a few random samples it all depends on the amount of time that you have to do your study and the amount of manpower or resources that you have available so your transect system would take you to different parts of the south shore and you would examine the intertidal zone at each spot checking for the diversity the distribution and the abundance of the barnacles Our objective 2.7.1 today required us to describe and to evaluate that command term evaluate requires us to examine to think about some strengths of my method at least three strengths and at least two weaknesses this would be the beginning of an evaluation to consider 2.7.2 .2, which requires a very similar analysis but this time with respect to some specific human activity ocean acidification the Bermuda reef platform is the center of studies in this particular field and it provides us with an excellent example of how a human activity which is 
the use of fossil fuels over the last 100 years especially which has released large amounts of carbon dioxide into the air and how this increase in carbon dioxide over the 20th century and continuing into the 21st century how this increase in carbon dioxide is now impacting the amount of carbon dioxide that enters the ocean and that in turn is affecting the acid base balance or the pH making the ocean more acidic it takes out carbonate ions from the water and this results in degradation or the eating away of any organisms that have calcium carbonate and of course the most widely known organism the most widely distributed organism in the ocean that has calcium carbonate is the coral so with this human intervention from carbon dioxide being added to the atmosphere oceans are being acidified and the Bermuda reef platform provides us an example of how pH of the ocean changes across an environmental gradient from the edge of the reef platform toward the island of Bermuda if we were to monitor the changes in pH across this platform at different points using an imaginary line and have several imaginary lines then we would be using the line transect method to study an abiotic factor across an environmental gradient there are changes in the acidity across the coral reef platform with a method of monitoring this abiotic factor across an environmental gradient and if at the same time we were to monitor the health of the coral at different points on the reef then we would also be keeping track of a biotic factor and if we study things within a belt across an environmental gradient then we use a belt transect if we study everything within the belt transect then we have a complete belt transect or if we study areas at intervals then we would have an interrupted belt transect what tools are available for us to measure the pH this is the kind of tool that's used by NOAA America's National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration and these buoys are set out into the ocean at different points tracking things like pH and temperature of the ocean and salinity and conductivity and they're not only able to give us changes in abiotic factors over distance but they are able to give us changes over time with devices like this able to give you readings of the pH every 30 minutes this enables scientists to track environmental gradients in two ways over space and over time for a complete discussion of the Bermuda platform ocean acidification case study I would like you to visit the NBC learn.com site finally I would like you to describe and evaluate a method for documenting changes in vegetation and temperature along a three kilometer by five kilometer hillside and here is a hint for you